In this video, we're going to go over six coins that you could potentially retire from if you found them and sold them just like these people did. Now the chances of you finding one of these coins is incredibly rare, but it is possible. Just like subscribers on my channel always say, you have a better probability of finding one of these coins than you do of hitting the lottery. Plus, searching for these coins is just flat out fun. It's an activity that you could do with friends or family members, but let's just jump right into this video. Up first, we have a 1932 25 cent Washington quarter. Now this one was by PCGS, a mint state 67. Really quickly, the highest grade achievable in grading is 70. And this one's only three points away from that perfect grade of 70. When you first look at this coin, you're going to question the color and appearance of the coin. Now what that is called is called toning. Toning occurs when air oxidizes with the metals in the coin and gives it an appearance, just like this. Some people may think this does not look good, but there are collectors out there that will pay a lot of money for a coin that is nicely toned. The reason why this coin sold for $40,250 is this. First of all, it's toned. Second of all, it was graded at a 67, which is really high. And lastly, this is a 1932 Washington Quarter. And it's important to know that 1932 is a very important date for the Washington Quarter. If you have a 1932 Quarter, it may be worth a lot of money. So make sure that if you find one, you keep it safe and don't get it damaged because the condition really does matter on these coins. This one little dime sold for $45,600 and this is why. So here we have a 1968 10 cent Roosevelt dime graded by PCGS a proof 69. Now remember, the highest grade we can get in grading is 70. This is only one point away from that perfect grade, which is so hard to get. The biggest reason why this one sold for this much money is because one, it's only one point away from the perfect grade of 70 and also it has no S mint mark. Now what do I mean by S mint mark? So around the date there, typically you're going to see an S mint mark. That S mint mark would stand for the San Francisco mint where this coin was minted. Now it's important to know the chances are if you have a 1968 coin like this and there's no mint mark, you probably have a Philadelphia minted coin. You have to have a proof coin. Proof coins have a shiny appearance to them. It almost looks like you're looking into a mirror. Essentially this is a called a mint error. And when they were minting this coin, they should have had an S mint mark there, but they didn't. And that's why this coin sold for $45,600. Up next, we have a 1942D 5 cent Jefferson nickel. Now this one was graded by PCGS, a mint state 66 with the full steps on the back. Now this coin sold for $31,725 and here's why. So first of all, when you flip the coin over, if you look at the back center of the coin, you will see the words Monticello. And above that are the steps. Those steps are the highest point on the coin and they are the hardest to strike. So if you have steps that are full on the back just like that, that is something that collectors really go after. But the main reason why this coin sold for so much money is if you look to the right of that, you're going to see a D mint mark. Now that D mint mark stands for the Denver mint where this coin was minted. This has what collectors call a D over horizontal D mint mark. That is an error. So the way to see this is if you get some sort of high magnification and zoom in on this area, you will see that there is a double strike mint air there where the D is a horizontal D. That's what you need to be looking out for in combination with the high grade and that's why this coin sold for $31,725. Next we have one of my favorite types of pennies. This is a 1909 S VDB one cent Lincoln wheat penny graded by PCGS a mint state 67 red. Quite a mouthful here but this was the first year the Lincoln wheat penny was ever produced 1909. As you can see on the front of the coin with the date there you see the S mint mark again. That means this coin was minted at the San Francisco Mint. If you flip the coin over and look in the back bottom center of the coin, you will see the initials of VDB. These are the initials of the engraver and designer of this coin, which is a really cool fact. The reason why this coin sold for $70,500 is because it graded so highly and it's such an old coin. Here we have a 1914S, again, San Francisco one cent wheat penny graded by PCGS a mint state 66. A good rule of thumb is the older your coin is, the better the condition, the more money it's going to be worth, and this coin sold for $83,375. Here's a 1943S one cent coin struck on a bronze planchet graded by NGC in AU53. That's a pretty low grade considering, but it doesn't really matter. AU means almost uncirculated, but the reason why this coin sold for so much money, $216,000, is because it was struck on a bronze planchet. If you have a 1943 penny, it should look silver, which is actually zinc, but it should not look bronze like this. If you have a coin that looks like this, chances are you 
may have a counterfeit coin, but you may have a genuine coin too. Essentially, this is a mint error and it should have never happened. And it is really, really challenging to find something like this, but it is possible. Again, this one little penny sold for $216,000. Hit that subscribe button. It really does help out. See you back with them. Stay tuned for more and I'll see you in the next video.